Mr. Murphy, an honor to see you again, sir. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing so well. I feel like everyone's going to say this because it makes us feel like we know you. But, man, I haven't seen you since you won your Oscar. So uh, congratulations, man. It's seriously very well-deserved and well-earned. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank I'm going to jump into this. Um, obviously, this is a movie that's based uh, on the novel by the amazing Claire Keegan. And, and I'd re I read a story I'd like to ask you about um, that you were reading one of her novels on a train and you became so moved that you started crying on the train and kind of had to pull the hoodie over your face. And, and I, what I want to ask about is, is really what a moment is like, like that, because I, I respect the fact that a piece of art can make you feel something so deeply that's, that's real and raw and authentic, but also you're in public and you're a recognizable guy. And I'd imagine you probably don't want everyone on the train going home saying, Oh my God, I saw Killian Murphy weeping on the train. Like what, what is a moment like that? When you're when you're feeling something as you're supposed to, but you're also you're 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 who you are. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't happen very often, you know. Particularly with novels, um, with, you know, it's hard for that that to for me for them to to elicit the same response. But that book is so beautiful and so tender, um, and so moving, and uh, it was it just I was just kind of overcome. And luckily, I had a, it was winter time and I had a really big hood, so I don't think anyone saw me. But I, I that 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 they made that book into a film called the The Quiet Girl, which was nominated for an Oscar, and um, it's a, again a beautiful story and a beautiful book. And that's the power of her writing. She's it's the economy of her language, but it's also the sort of purity of her message and her, this the narrative. Is that she can just knock you out in such a in such a uh, uh, with such brief um, in such a brief book? Like they're little novellas, really. Are you a movie crier? I've, ever since I turned thirty, man, I cry at everything whenever I go to the movies now. Everything? No joke, dude. I, I wept during Oppenheimer. No joke. Like it's just like ever. I just feel. I don't know. I don't know. Something. It's like someone inside like turned on a switch, man. I don't know what happened. I love it because I love being able to feel things. But yeah. uh, are, are you a movie crier? Do you have kids? I don't. I have a dog. Well, my, my, for me, it was when I had when I started having kids that that was when everything became I became very kind of raw. I stuff became I don't know. You just everything feels huge when you have these new lives. I mean, so that's the, when I started sort of being more emotional, I think. And, and Fair enough. Uh, um th uh, this obviously this story this this is an important story to tell um but but as acclaimed as this book is and as as great as this film is and as the reviews have been i feel like any time you tell a story about the church uh doing something that is not right there are going to be people who just do not want to hear it that would rather just sort of bury their heads in the sand um and, and ignore the truth of, of what has happened or, or sometimes what is happening what would you say to someone who who is maybe devout and as great as this movie is and as honest as this story is does not want to hear it well that's fair you know and it's i'm really like i respect people that have faith i really do i have no issue with that what i what i have an issue with is faith being imposed on people you you know and and uh and that happened in our country and you know i have a, i have a problem with um absolutism you know what i mean and that happened in our country and and i have a problem with you know the control over morals or the control over people's bodies and uh, like uh, that's the stuff that i have a problem with but there's i have no problem with people that have faith or belief or any of that you know Fair enough. Um, I mentioned to you earlier that that I hadn't spoken to you uh, since you won your Oscar. And, and that is a moment that that most of us will never know what it's like. But many actors do imagine, I'd imagine, uh, what, what that moment would be like. I'm sort of curious in what way was uh, hearing your name, the walk to the stage, standing there up on that stage. In what way was it different than you expected? What was the wildest thing about that moment that there's no way you can anticipate? Oh, to be honest with you, it all seems like this really mad, wonderful dream. You know, I have a very poor recall of it all. I can't really remember much about that evening, to be totally honest with you. And I don't know if I have processed enough of it properly, because I went straight back to work after it. Really, That was clearly my coping mechanism. 
it was so surreal. I, I felt so humbled by it and so grateful and so kind of, it's it's weird because it's did the opposite made me feel incredibly insignificant <laughs> but but w w wonderful but but genuinely i i can't remember hardly anything about it. i can't remember what i said i can't remember any of that it was a good speech they're about to pull me out of here but i'm just going to ask really quickly i don't know if you can tell i'm speaking to you from uh, the great city of chicago and you uh, have such a great history here um there's actually there's great oppenheimer history here but obviously you shot uh, a few films here in the batman series i'd love yeah. to know what what are some of your your favorite memories of filming those movies in our city oh i remember i went on an amazing architectural tour on the river yeah and that was that was that was amazing because i love architecture and uh and I remember we did a lot of night shoots there. So I would spend the day just walking around, going to galleries. Unfortunately, I couldn't go to see any gigs and stuff because we were working at nighttime. But um, beautiful city, absolutely beautiful city. And and the great irony is that the, the Manhattan Project actually has a, a small small seed that started right here uh, in Chicago and then obviously ended up being a big deal with, with Oppenheimer. Uh, Mr. Murphy, I could talk with you all day. I've got 10,000 more questions, sir, but thank you for continuing to make projects that, that make my job easy because I, I watch it. I'm in awe and it just has me just scribbling down questions the whole time. And it is always an honor to be able to speak with you, sir. Thanks, man. Nice to see you. Nice Take to care. see you again. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye bye. We don't need roads.